This video will look at the data structure in Grasshopper. The data structure is organized into three categories a tree, a branch, and a list. And let's think of these lists as leaves. To start, my C plane is set to world front. I'm going to draw one control point curve. And I'm going to copy three more of these curves. And to do that, I'm going to set my C plane back to world top. I'll type in copy and I'll select this curve and I'll make three copies of it. Okay, I'm going to select these four curves and press the F10 key to turn on my control points. And I'm just going to make each curve a little bit different. And the first one can remain as is. Press F11 to turn off the control points. Select all four curves. Type in loft. We'll accept the defaults. Here is our surface. Now we need to get our surface from Rhino into Grasshopper. From the geometry panel, we have surface. We'll drag that down. I like to deselect my surface first by clicking in Rhino, right click on the surface component, choose set one surface, and select our surface. Now Grasshopper is controlling that surface. I'll select the surface in Rhino and type in hide, enter. The next thing we're going to do is divide that surface. I'll need two components to divide the surface. The first one is a divide domain, square, this will create a U and a V grid. Then to create my individual surfaces, I'll use an ISO trim. And when you bring that component out, the name on the body subsurface makes more sense. So it takes the two-dimensional U and V grid and creates subsurfaces out of that, ultimately creating a divided surface from this original. OK. so my surface gets plugged into my divide domain squared it also gets plugged into my subsurface and then I need to connect the divide domain and there we have our divided surface I can turn off my original surface by selecting it and clicking on the blindfold to turn off the preview now I'm left with my divided surface I'm going to make this geometry less complex by lowering the number of U and V grid lines, which by default are set to 10. I need a number slider. I'll double click and bring out my number slider. And I need to change it from floating point, which is decimal, to integer. I'll do that by double clicking on the word slider, change it to N for integers, and let's set the range to 5, from 0 to 5. I'll need one for the U and one for the V, so I'm going to control C, copy, and paste. Let's move this a little bit further along so that we have some room to plug in our U and V sliders. And let's set our U count to 3. And just to not confuse the curves of our grasshopper surface with the original curves from Rhino, I'm going to select everything in Rhino and just type in hide. It's a little easier to see now. Okay, so the purpose of this tutorial is to look at the data structure in Grasshopper. 
So to create our data tree, I'm going to explode this subsurface. So I'm going to double click and type in explode. And I'm going to use what's called the BREP components. What this component does is it allows me to access faces, edges, and points or vertices. So I'm going to plug my subsurface in. And this now creates a data tree. To see that better, I'm going to use my param viewer. Bring that out. And I'll plug my points in. And here you'll see that I have three branches. And each branch has four points. So since I've plugged my points in, the three branches, which are this set of four points that belong to this surface, the four points that make up this surface, and the four points that make up this surface. So one, two, three branches, and each branch has four points. One, two, three, four. And that is illustrated here in this param viewer. If I double click on it, I can see my tree structure. So my surface is from here to here, and then I have one branch, two branch, three branch. And each one of those branches has four points. Okay, now the whole idea is to be able to access the branches as well as the points. Okay, so let's start with the branches. I'll double click, I'll start to type in tree, and I'll choose tree branch. Okay, the dashed wire represents a tree. So that's my data tree of points. I'm going to plug that into my branch. The P stands for path. I want to select a specific item in the path. So I need a list item. So I'm going to double click and start to type in list item. Okay, that gets plugged in to my path. So I'm missing a number slider. I'm going to go to the beginning of my definition and copy and paste. And that item is coming from this list. I'm going to highlight my tree branch. Okay. So Remember, each one of these branches can, contains four points. So I'll set this to zero. So here's my first branch, my second branch, and my third branch. Remember, Grasshopper starts from zero, one, and two. So a total of three branches. Now to access individual points in a branch, I can use a list item. At the output of this branch is a list of four points. So I can take my slider and my list item and copy paste. And this time the list is the output of this branch. I highlight that. Here's point zero. Remember, there's four. It's the second point, third point, and the fourth point. So now I have access to each one of those points. And we'll take this a little further and create a structure for this surface. What I'll need is access to the remaining points. So I'll need three more of these. And I'll number them sequentially. So that'll be one, two, and three. And to create this structure, we're going to use 
the line component. Double click, type in line, creates a line between two points. Okay, so this was 0, 1, 2. So I'm going to draw a diagonal line from 0 to 2. So plug in 0 to A and 2 into B. And obviously that's not following the surface, but we'll get to that. We're going to subdivide that surface into more surfaces. For now, I'm going to put a pipe component. And I'm going to plug my line into the pipe. By default, that radius is set to 1. We'll take one of our number sliders. And we'll plug that into the radius. Let's get a thicker pipe and we can use this to control all of our structure okay so let's add a little more to our structure let's draw a line from 0 to 1 so I'm going to copy and paste this one okay 0 is already plugged in so I'll plug 1 into B and I'm going to add this to my pipe using my shift key. So there's my pipe there. And then we'll add a line here creating a triangle. And that line is going to be from 1 to 2. So I'll copy and paste that. And I'll plug 1 into A and 2 into B. And I'll use my shift key and plug that into my pipe. So what's the purpose of accessing these leaves? The purpose is that I can create one triangle as opposed to every branch having a triangle. And in architecture, there's going to be cases where I need to do that. Access one panel of glass and add a structure to it. And this is helpful accessing this tree structure because I can't explicitly model in Grasshopper. I can't touch these things and select them. So that was our triangular structure. Now if I want this to be applied to every branch then I just need to remove this part of my definition because now that structure is only being applied to my first branch. So what I can do is I can disconnect my list and plug it directly, my list of points, plug it directly in to these items. And you see that now replicating itself. and we can increase our U and our V grid start to conform to our surface so there is our structure and what I'll do next is I'll look at creating glass panels so let's rename this, we'll call this pipe structure. And now I'll need a component for my glass. So for that I'm going to use a planar surface. Okay, and to create that planar surface I'm going to use these lines. And there is our planar surface. Now, what will happen if I hide the underlying surface? So, if I go back to the beginning of my definition and I hide my explode component and my subsurface, turn off the preview for those. 
what you'll find is that I'm missing the beginning edge of my surface. So I'm going to have to create some more structure connecting my zero point to my three point. So I can do that by creating another line and I'm going to connect zero to three and you see that gives me this front edge and I'll plug that in using my shift key to my pipe and then I'm going to also need if I orbit around the last edge here and that's going to be from 2 to 3 so I'll copy and paste that line one more time and I'll plug in 2 and 3 and there you see that last edge and using my shift key I'll plug that into the pipe 